Hi there, welcome back. Okay, I'm going to give you two videos about Russell today. In this one, I'm going to revisit uh, some of the stuff we talked about last time with the way Russell analyzes sentences with definite descriptions. So those are descriptions that start with the definite article, that is the word the. Um, we're going to get some uh, sim symbols that are shorthand for some of the ideas we talked about last time. Um, symbols that will be familiar to people who took logic previously. Um, but for those of you who didn't take logic, as long as you followed the discussion in my last video, this will just be shorthand for things you've seen before. We're going to use a symbol you haven't seen, right, a backwards E, but that's not introducing any new ideas. You already know how to deal with it. You know what it says if you understand um, what we were talking about last time. And I'll go through that again briefly here. Part of the reason I'm giving you the symbols is just because it simplifies things. It's handy, and you may run into it in other philosophy you read elsewhere, um, but also partly because one of the readings for this class, the Quine paper, uses this kind of symbolic notation. Um, now, because we had the strike, I'm not going to be lecturing on the Quine paper. Uh, the question on Quine that was going to be on the exam will still be there because the way the exam works, you get to choose two of six questions. And if you decide to take on the Quine paper, that's fine. Um, but because of the strike, I got to cut lectures somewhere and I decided the Quine ones are the ones I'm going to drop, partly because students, uh, that, that I have found is the least popular question to answer. But if you want to read the Quine paper and you want help with it, I'm more than happy to talk it over. Okay, let's talk about Russell. So, let me draw your attention not to the highlighted bit of the paper itself there. We're going to build up to that. So the part I've highlighted there tells you, here's what Russell thinks is going on with a sentence like, the father of Charles II was executed. Let me build up to that with um, some other sentences. So over here in the whiteboard, I've started with this sentence, Charles I was the father of Charles II. Okay, Russell thinks this sentence says something like the following two things. First of all, Charles I begat Charles II, and nobody else begat Charles II. Charles I is the unique person who begat Charles II. That's what Russell thinks the word the does. It tells you not just that there's somebody who satisfies the description, but that there's exactly one person. There's a unique person. In this sentence, I've told you who the person is. That's why we've got Charles I here, and that's why Charles I shows up down here. Okay, something we saw last time that uh, I may have gone over too quickly. Russell gives you a way of formalizing a sentence like this. So here's another way of saying nobody other than Charles I begat Charles II. We can say, if someone begat Charles II, then that someone is Charles I. So if you have somebody who did this thing, that person has to be this person. That says the same thing as this. The way Russell writes that, the way Russell formalizes this, involves the concept we used before of taking the names out of a sentence to wind up with something with a gap in it, a blank, and then to say, no matter what you put in that blank, you'll get a true sentence. So Russell says, this someone, that's kind of like a blank. If blank begat Charles II, then blank is Charles I. And then we say, this is always true. But now, Instead of writing out blanks, Russell uses little variables. So we use a little letter X to stand for a blank. If X begat Charles II, then X is Charles I. That thing is always true, meaning no matter what name you put in for X, 
and you have to put the same name in all the blanks marked X. As long as you put the same name in the first X and in the second X, then you'll get a true sentence. So if Charles the first begat Charles the second, then Charles the first is Charles the first. That's true. If Roger begat Charles the second, then Roger is Charles the first. Well, I'm. It's true that I'm not Charles the first. But I also didn't beget Charles II, so this sentence that says, if I had done this thing, then I'd be that guy. That still comes out true. Okay. So, I'm going to put that in for the nobody other than. Okay. Here's actually an extra bit of symbolic notation. When I want to say that something is always true, here's some modern notation for this. So I want to say this thing in these brackets is always true. Here's how we write that in modern logic. We put a little upside down A in front of X. that says something like always whatever you put in for x in the thing in the brackets, you get something true. Okay. I'm actually, I said I would give you extra logical notation there. You don't need this. Um, Quine doesn't use that symbol. So I'm going to just bring this back to the way it was. I'm going to leave this as nobody other than Charles I begat Charles II. Um, we can rephrase that in terms of something being always true. That's less important than the thing I'm about to give you. Okay, let me amend the original sentence. So our first step was we started with saying Charles I was the father of Charles II. Now suppose I want to say Charles I was the father of Charles II and he was executed. We're getting a little closer to the original highlighted sentence that we're building up to. Okay, this sentence, Charles I was the father of Charles II, and he was executed, that still says Charles I was the father of Charles II. So, so those two things that I was saying before, he begat Charles II and nobody else did, it's still saying those, and now we're just adding a third thing in. So I'm going to put another and and say Charles I was executed. Okay. So far, so good. This is how you say, Charles I was the father of Charles II, and he was executed. We say these three things. He begat Charles II, nobody else begat that guy, um, and he was executed. Now, if I want to get the original sentence, the original sentence that says, the father of Charles II was executed, that's what Russell's got over there, I want to take Charles I out of here. So if I have a sentence that just says, the father of Charles II was executed. Well, okay, now this doesn't tell me who the father was. Somebody was, but I don't know who. Was it Charles I? Was it James I? Was it Cromwell? This sentence is a little hazier on English history. Okay. So, if I'm going to modify my analysis of that top sentence in order to get it to this one. I want to take out all mention of Charles the first to begin with. So I'm going to take that out. But once I take it out, I'm going to be left with a blank. Blanks look like this. Little letters from the end of the alphabet. So I wind up with something like this. Okay, this says blank was the father of Charles the second and was executed. Now, Russell thinks these two things are not the same, right? This one up top here, we've taken out Charles I, but we have a gap, right? This is something that's going to be either true or false, depending on what you fill in the gap. So if I put the name Roger in here, we got a false sentence. Roger was the father of Charles II and was executed. No, neither of those things have happened to me. Um, Margaret Thatcher was the father of Charles II and was executed also both false, uh, and so on. But if I put in the name Charles I, then I get true. Okay, whereas this sentence doesn't have a gap. It's just true, period. 
it's true because of facts about Charles I, but the sentence itself doesn't tell us the name of the person who makes this true. Okay, Russell thinks the relationship between these two sentences is the one down here says there's at least one thing you can put in this gap here in the top sentence to get something true. In other words, this is not always false, or is sometimes true. That is, there's at least one thing you can put in for the x to get something true. Okay, so that's what we want down here. I want to say there is some way to fill in the blank x such that if you, there's some name you can put in for x such that if you put that same name in all three of these x blanks, you'll get a true sentence. Now, here's the bit of logic that I wanted to give you, the bit of logical notation. The way we write that in logic class is with a backwards e. So we'll sometimes read this expression as there exists an x such that the thing in the brackets is true. That is, there's at least one thing such that if you put a name of that thing in all of those x gaps, you get a true sentence. Okay, so just to sum up, for Russell, this sentence, the father of Charles II was executed, says there is at least one thing such that that thing begat Charles II, and nobody other than that thing begat Charles II, and that thing was executed. Okay, now if we look at what Russell's actually written here, so it's not always false of x, that's the same as saying it's sometimes true of x, and that's what, oops, wrong tool, that's what this thing here, what in logic class we call the existential quantifier, that's what that says. This thing says, stuff after me is not always false. In other words, there's at least one thing you can find to put in that gap. Okay, so it's not always false of x that, and now we're going to get three things x begat Charles II, that's right here, and x was executed, I put that one at the bottom, and this complicated thing, if y begat Charles II, y is identical with x is always true of y, that's just saying nobody other than x begat Charles II. Okay, just to beat this over the head, nobody other than x begat Charles II, that Russell's writing that as uh, take this thing if y begat Charles II then y is identical with x is always true these two things say the same thing uh, I'm gonna leave that there um, if that's unclear think about it some more and then ask me a question that's the end of this video